Welcome everybody to our webinar today titled Focusing In, Using Imagery and Analytics Across Agriculture and Forestry. My name is Audrey Lamb. We have a lot of people attending today and we are so excited to be able to present this content to you. Our agriculture and forestry teams share many use cases and as well as a few customers. So we're excited to bring everybody together today for a joint webinar on a shared subject. Now we're gonna turn our cameras off so that we don't distract you from the content throughout the rest of the webinar. Hello folks. First, let's start with some guidelines. I'd like to interact with you during this event. So if you have questions, please enter them in the go to webinar dialog box and a member of our team will do their best to get to them. At the end of the event, we'll do our best to also answer as many questions as possible with our remaining time. All questions not answered today will be followed up by an Esri agriculture or forestry team member. By far the most asked question is usually, is this meeting being recorded? Good news. The answer is yes. The recording will be shared with all registered attendees in the next few days. We also have poll questions for you during today's presentation. They too are in the dialog box of the to go to webinar machine. We would like to engage with you via these polls as well. So we encourage you to answer them as you see fit. And we also have two handouts. One is a copy of our presentation and the other is a page of resources and products that you'll see today. The handouts are located in the GoToWebinar control box. We'll get started in a few minutes with an introduction of today's presenters. And then we'll, go, we'll dig into what I consider to be three acts of this presentation. In each of these sections, we'll explore in which everyone from a novice to an expert GIS person can start using imagery to perform advanced analytics on imagery in order to disseminate imagery from resources. So in the first stack, it's content discovery. We'll show you that we can get started with imagery resources. This is where everyone in need of imagery products should start. The amount of data that's available that you're gonna see is unreal. I, I really think you'll like this a lot. Secondly, we'll build upon that and show you how you can extend the use of imagery by doing analytics. And in the third part, democratizing imagery across your organization, we'll show ways for using ArcGIS products to create information products, and then pushing it out via applications and showing you actionable data in which you can make decisions, as well as share actionable information throughout your organization. Next, we'll talk about how we can help you get started today. Really, it's important that we help you be successful beyond today moving forward. Your success is always our directive. As mentioned before, at the end, of the, uh, at the end, we will answer as many questions as possible. So let's get started. This is your team of presenters today. Audrey Lamb, who kicked us off today, will be a co-presenter with me. Audrey is an account manager for the forestry team and is based in Washington, Olympia, Washington. Did you know that Olympia has historically been dependent on artesian water for their supply? I'm Char Charlie Magruder, and I'm a senior account executive on the agriculture team, and I'm based in the City of Fountains, Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City is called the City of Fountains because we have over 200 fountains throughout the metro area. It's beautiful. Scott Newlis is that handsome young man next, Scott is a solution engineer, and he works out of our Houston facility. Did you know that Houston is the most diverse city in the United States, more diverse than New York City, Los Angeles, or Chicago? It truly is a minority majority city. And we saved the best for last. Dr. Elvis Takao, a solution engineer from our ag team who works out of our San Antonio, Texas office. Here's something about San Antonio. Did you know it is home of the El Mercado shopping district? It's the largest Mexican market in the US. All four of us are on the natural resources team and we're dedicated to forestry and agriculture. Excellent, thank you so much, Charlie, for kicking that off. If today is your first time getting to know us, welcome. We're so glad you're here. Esri is the global market leader in GIS and we've been in business as a software company for over 50 years. We're based in Redlands, California, with offices around the United States and around the world. As you can see here, more than 350,000 organizations use our tools to help them build, query, manipulate data, answer questions, and share that data as far as they need. ArcGIS is the tool set for all your spatial needs, 
and we're so excited that you're here with us today. In both agriculture and forestry, we're facing the challenge of doing more with less or managing more lands with fewer people. On top of that, both of our industries are facing the impact of climate change right now and having to plan for resiliency with a more unpredictable climate in the future. Traditionally, GIS has served as a critical system to help many of you manage, plan, and communicate about activities on the lands that you're working. To rise to the challenge our industries are facing, imagery is now an essential tool for all organizations to understand, plan, and predict management activities. If you're not using imagery already, we hope this webinar shows you that you should be and how to get started. If you're already using imagery, we're gonna show you how to further integrate imagery with your GIS and extend your analysis across your organization. We know that GIS provides a modern framework for managing all types of geospatial information, and it can do the same for remotely sensed imagery. ArcGIS provides three main things to work with and effectively use your data. A system of record, or your imagery management, a system of insight, which is the ability to analyze your imagery, and a system of engagement, that environment that allows you to share your data insights as image services in the Esri Geospatial Cloud. Together, these three are the foundational capabilities of the ArcGIS imagery platform. Charlie? So let's look, uh, take a quick look at the overall ArcGIS imagery platform that Audrey just mentioned. While this architecture may be a little overwhelming to some, just remember that it starts with ArcGIS Pro. In fact, ArcGIS Pro may be the only tool that some of you need. Many of you, though, will need additional tools for your imagery needs, but realize that ArcGIS Pro is the access point for publishing imagery to server technology, therefore creating imagery services. This would be the system of engagement Audrey mentioned a few minutes ago. Photogrammetry sources shown here on the left are used to make the data accurate and authoritative for use within your GIS. Image analytics can be set to run at scale to extract features from the imagery and do all types of advanced analysis, including things like change detection. And ultimately, users can access all their content using web applications. Finally, the platform can display imagery and outputs from the imagery in many ways via decision makers. Then it can be shared via story maps, web maps, apps, or one of my favorites, operational dashboards for the rest of the organization to consume. This is what we mean when we say ArcGIS is a comprehensive imagery platform. Awesome, thank you so much, Charlie, for that really thorough overview. Let's spend a few minutes talking about imagery and forestry. Imagery is a key tool set that forestry companies use to plan activities, understand what's happening on the ground, and quickly communicate about management activities. Many companies use publicly available Landsat imagery to conduct annual depletions on harvest activities. We see more and more companies using premium, high-resolution satellite imagery to get timely updates on harvest boundaries and regular updates on their properties. Drone fleets are becoming an essential tool for companies to immediately verify activities on the ground, inspect forests after a storm event, plan vegetation management activities, and share updated imagery with clients. And this is really the tip of the iceberg. I know that many of you are using imagery and drones for a lot of other use cases in forestry. Charlie, back to you. Thanks, Audrey. Those examples are excellent. Uh, we too see a lot of varying use cases in agriculture. Our examples range from the simple, like incorporating high quality base maps for improved visual baseline mapping. Who, who can't uh, benefit from a high quality base map, right? We also have users that are collecting their own imagery through uh, methods like the use of drones to get them way beyond just base maps. They'll use the collected drone data to perform analysis from events like a post-summer storm where they're looking for information about damaged crops. We've also seen that they want to share that data with their seed providers for replantings or sharing with crop advisors or even their crop insurers for quick claim management. We also have customers that license satellite imagery 
Remember that premium data set that Audrey talked about a minute ago? Or they have fixed wing aircraft collect multi-spectral data and use it for in-season crop health analysis for crop nutrient decision-making. Those decisions ultimately help farmers maximize their yields as well as collect intel for use in future crop analysis and planning. The baseline accessibility and advanced use of imagery are growing every day. And today we'll focus on showing you some of those advanced cases. Fantastic. So let's get started by seeing how we can access imagery. Esri has a lot of raster data and imagery available for you to use that's included with the licenses that you're paying for right now. If you haven't worked with imagery before and don't know where to start, this demonstration is gonna give you a great jumping off point to uncover data sets that will help make your workflows more efficient and make imagery more accessible to others across your organization. So with that, I'm gonna turn things over to Scott. All right, thank you, Audrey. Finding useful imagery can be time consuming, difficult, and even expensive in some cases. And you know, we know that a lot of you are subscribing to premium imagery today or even collecting your own through drones and other means. But regardless of what you're doing, uh, there's a lot of relevant and useful content available at your fingertips within ArcGIS. And some of that is highlighted here on this slide. Specifically, the Living Atlas is the world's largest collection of curated geospatial data, and it contains a lot of great imagery that's authoritative and ready to use. To get started in the Living Atlas, you can enter a keyword to browse for specific content, or you can search through theme-based categories to find exactly what you're looking for. So when we hear the word, the word imagery, oftentimes remote sense data is the first thing that comes to mind, you know, traditional satellite imagery. And here in the imagery category, we've got a ton of base map, multispectral, temporal, event-based imagery, and more. Here's where you'll find things like Sentinel-2, NAEP, Planet, Landsat, and more. And all of these are great sources of imagery that you can bring into your maps and apps today for updated base maps or to look at different things. And we'll take a look at some of this content here in a minute. But beyond this idea of traditional satellite imagery, the Living Atlas also includes a variety of thematic imagery or raster data as well. And many of these can be found here under the environment category. And this really contains information about pretty much everything you can think of in terms of environment, natural you know, observations, uh, world-based data sets. And if we look through here, we can see there's actually a lot of content that's relevant to forestry and ag today. For example, this USA forest type layer, it's an imagery layer that's published and maintained by Esri. It can help you better understand forest type distribution patterns and predict wildlife movement or the effect of climate change on forest species. And then this USA Sergo soils data, uh, that's a really great uh, you know, data set that you can use to learn information about soil properties and characteristics used for hydrologic modeling and crop suitability analysis. So, Scrolling through here, there's really a lot of great imagery layers, raster data sets that you can pull into your maps for visualization and uh, analysis, complex spatial analysis. But beyond data sets, there's also ready to use applications that are configured and published and provided and shared to you. These include you know, USA wildfire applications that help you understand where current wildfires are and look at smoke forecasts and how that might impact your croplands or your timberlands. Then there's also the World Imagery Wayback app that helps you, helps you explore historical imagery and see how things have changed over time. And then one of my favorites is this Land at, Landsat Explorer app that actually allows you to do change detection over imagery collected over time. So it's really a lot of useful and relevant tools that uh, you can come in here and start to use right off the bat. And all of this is included to you as a user of ArcGIS today at no additional cost. So we don't have time to go into a lot of the specific data sets that you can get through the Living Atlas, but what I wanna take a few minutes to do is just show you how some of these data sets can be used in a few common workflows. So I mentioned satellite imagery and being one of the most versatile and widely used types of imagery out there. And many of you are already working with satellite imagery today, but if you're new, the ArcGIS 
world imagery base map is a really good place to start. You can pull this in directly to the map viewer and it's really a great source of imagery because it offers global coverage, sub-meter resolution in many parts of the world, and allows you to have a really good backdrop. So if we zoom in here to some timberlands in central Alabama, we can see this world imagery base map provides us a nice, crisp, clean look that we can overlay operational layers on to create nice maps. But if we click on this, this image here, we can see it's not the most up-to-date. This particular image was collected over two years ago in April of 2019. So what we're not seeing is a lot of the recent activity that's occurred. And this can be problematic if we need to update our data sets or provide up-to-date base maps to workers in the field. So this is really where that Living Atlas content can come in and help out. Directly in the map viewer, I can browse through the Living Atlas content by just adding data and I can see all of those categories that we just looked at. So if I come in here and click on the imagery category, I can see all of those authoritative imagery data sets that we can pull into our map. And one of my favorites here is the Sentinel-2 views. Sentinel-2 offers 10 meter multispectral resolution data at a global scale and it's updated on a daily basis. So I can add this layer directly to my map and I can stream in the most up-to-date imagery and see it directly there on the map. And I can see a lot of harvest activity and updated uh, in this updated base map that allows me to maybe go and update some of our uh, post-harvest boundaries or do depletion estimates. And if I click on this image here, I can see it's collected just a few days ago. This was five days ago. It's amazing that I'm able to bring this data set in. I have a really up-to-date, crisp base map that I can use for a variety of different sources, all without downloading any data. Another reason I like Sentinel-2 is that it's multispectral. So I can come in here to the image display properties and I can select from these preset rendering templates that allow me to display the satellite data in different ways. So by default, we're looking at the natural color imagery. Or if I wanted to come in here and apply this agriculture renderer, we can actually see in context what the relative vegetation health looks like based on the different signatures, spectral signatures we're getting from the satellite. And so this allows me to even more uh, you know, even more with a highly degree of accuracy, pull out exactly where some of these harvest activities have occurred. And this is applicable not only to forestry, but also ag. So if we zoom over here to Missouri, where we've got some crop fields, and we look at the natural color imagery base map, you know, we can see eh, it's a little outdated, might be hard to define or infer what the status or condition of some of these crop fields are. But if we bring in the Sentinel-2 views with our multispectral data, we can much easily see where crop fields of, of concern are based on their relative health. And again, I can click on this image and I can see it was collected just a few days before in July 24th. So this is a, a great source of remotely sensed data that you can add to, to any map. But beyond this traditional satellite imagery, I mentioned there's a variety of thematic raster imagery as well. So here in Northern California, we know that wildfires pose a constant threat to forest operations. And if we look at some approved harvest plans in this area, we can see that there's a lot of activity. So if I'm a forest operator or a landowner, I wanna know where areas of high concern are in terms of wildfire risk. So I know how to mitigate and appropriately plan my activities. So again, if I come into the, the Living Atlas and add some content, we can search for anything we're interested in. And if in this case, I'm interested in wildfire potential, I can go ahead and enter in those keywords there. And I can see a variety of authoritative layers, in this case, that are published by the Forest Service. And if I click on one of these, I can see this quantifies the relative risk potential at a 30 meter, 30 meter resolution. And I can go ahead and add this layer to my map. Now, what this does is it helps me immediately start to identify where areas of high or very high wildfire risk is. And I can come in here using the new map viewer and update the blending style. So I can easily see where my harvest boundaries overlap. And using this, right, I can click on certain stands or harvest units and see and identify exactly where those high risk areas are. And I might use this information to mitigate risk by prioritizing fuel treatment activities or updating my harvest activities accordingly. So a really great authoritative source of data that you can stream into any map and use for visualization and analysis. Zooming over here to the 
East Coast in the Metro Charlotte area, we see some crop fields um, that are undergoing rapid change. So areas like this are you know, experiencing increased urbanization that's continuing to accelerate. And what this change is doing is it's modifying you know, how the land is being used in these areas. So if we zoom in here, we can see this is pretty evident looking at just the world imagery base map where we see a lot of subdivision development uh, around some of our crop fields. And we can even see one of these crop fields down here has been converted for energy production to meet this growing demand. So as an organization that manages land and relies on land, we want to make sure that we, one, understand what current land use is, and two, we want to better be better positioned to understand how that might change into the future so that we can make good management decisions. Again, looking at the Living Atlas, there's a variety of great land use and land cover data that you can add directly to your map. So if I come in here and search for land cover, there's a really nice Esri 2020 land cover map that we just released that provides 10 meter coverage or 10 meter resolution coverage uh, at a global scale uh, that is pretty accurate in terms of classifying how land is being used today. So if we come in here and again, update our blending mode, we can see exactly how all of this land has been classified. And we might use this as a baseline, right, to understand again how it's being used today and compare future change against. So this gives us a really good understanding again of how current land is being used in and around our property. But again, I, I'm really concerned on about how this, this change is gonna move forward, how, how it's gonna change uh, in the future, right? So. If I toggle off this land cover layer, I can pull in another layer from the Living Atlas, this land cover vulnerability change layer that allows me to see this in a little bit different context. So what we're looking at here is another thematic raster layer that classifies the vulnerability of change of different areas based on the predicted change up to the year 2050. So what we're really interested in here is these areas in yellow. And I can see one of my big crop fields here falls directly in this area of concern. I can go ahead and click on that and I can see one, what that vulnerability is, which is pretty high here on a scale of zero to one. And two, I can understand what my land uh, amount in terms of value and financial impact is gonna be. So pulling all these different factors together, I can really start to better understand different aspects of my business, how I may uh, change or acquired the best land in the future. And I can even scale this out over you know, an entire continent if I want to and look at areas all over the country and start to prioritize and assess you know, the risk of each one of our, our different properties. So just a couple of examples here of how we can pull in Living Atlas content to some of our everyday workflows and supplement right, some of what we're doing today with, with imagery. And again, we didn't have a lot of time to cover a lot of the other great content in the Living Atlas. So I really encourage each of you to get in there, take a, a deep dive and see what layers you can use in your everyday workflows. A lot of this content, like I said, is directly accessible. It's free to use. Uh, one of the greatest benefits is you don't have to download or maintain any data. It's all authoritative. You can just add it to your map and start using it today. So with that, Audrey, I'll toss it back over to you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Scott. That was a fantastic demonstration. And I don't know about all of you, but I'm really excited to <laughs> take some of the workflows that he showed and, and start uh, learning them and applying them myself. So let's talk about what Scott just showed to all of us. Um, we saw a rich collection of imagery content that's available with ArcGIS and our Living Atlas. All of this content is available with the licenses that you have right now. Scott showed us four categories of imagery. The first one was base maps. And he showed us base maps that were collected two days ago. He showed us multi-spectral imagery um, so that we could better understand crop health. We also looked at event imagery to assess wildfire potential on some of our timberlands. And then finally, he did a change detection workflow for land cover to look at the risk of conversion um, and help prioritize management actions in the future. We saw Scott use authoritative raster imagery to understand and plan for business critical activities, all with imagery that you have access to right now 
in a web browser. The type of information that he showed is, um, we get a lot of feedback from many of you that this is the type of information that you're looking for and regularly use. And again, all these capabilities are available to you um, with your desktop or ArcGIS online license. You can pull up these layers in a matter of minutes to better understand and plan for your own land management activities. So now I'm gonna kick things over to Charlie. Meow, I love that demo you did, Scott. That was fantastic. And uh, Audrey, thank you for the recap. That was really good too. Um, I think that the Living Atlas is the perfect place for we get started with our imagery discussion. Uh, it makes perfect sense using that stuff. The amount of imagery and imagery products that are available to you is amazing, just utterly amazing. Um, so now let's progress the story even further into our second act, which is the beyond visualization, extending imagery products for analytics, um, or as I like to call it, unleashing your imagery data and sharing it with the superheroes of your organization. Eh, maybe that's too much. Uh, I'll hand it over to Elvis and Scott to walk us through the ways and this can happen. Guys? Okay, thank you, Charlie. I appreciate the introduction. Um, to get started, let's think about this scenario. Um, in agriculture in particular, inclement weather can severely impact crop harvest and lead to tremendous loss of revenue. As an imagery analyst, you can perform basically a damage assessment by exploring multispectral imagery captured before a storm event and even after the storm event. So looking at my area of interest in its natural color before the storm event and four days after the storm event, it's clear that there's been some change in this area. So using our new ArcGIS image for ArcGIS Online capabilities, any user licensed with an image analyst extension can use their web browser to analyze change. First, we're going to calculate a soil adjusted vegetation index, better known as SAVI for both of my images. So we'll use the before and after, and we'll calculate this soil adjusted vegetation index which is essentially a measure of vegetation health. Now this relies on our near infrared band, which is band four, and our red band, which is band three. And it measures the gap or the difference between these two bands. And if I run this analysis, and in the interest of time, I've run this ahead of time, we'll get a savvy before, and a savvy value after. Now, a higher savvy value indicates a higher presence of healthy vegetation. Let me show you what that actually looks like using a swipe tool. This is my before, and as I swiped... I think we may have lost Elvis here. Let's um, give him a, a minute here to see if he reconnects. Tell you what, let's, I'm gonna make a decision here. Um, Scott, are you ready? You wanna go ahead and turn this over to you to do the second part of that presentation? Sure, yeah, we'll, we'll give Elvis maybe a few minutes. Apologize, folks, we are doing this live and many of us are working from home, so we might have some, some internet difficulties, but hopefully we can get Elvis back. Uh, so in the meantime, we'll, we'll pivot and we'll focus on a forestry specific workflow, although a lot of these concepts could also be applied towards agriculture as well. Uh, a lot of things that we're hearing these days, right? One of the most popular workflows is forest carbon accounting. So being able to map forest inventory and generate carbon storage estimates within these areas of interest. And imagery visualization and analysis is a key part of this workflow. And I wanna show you how this can be done in about five or so minutes completely in the cloud using the new ArcGIS image for ArcGIS Online capability. So let's start with a map of our AOI. Here we see three large timber tracks, again, in central Alabama. And we're, we want to evaluate these for a carbon offset program. So in order to generate estimates of how much carbon can actually be stored in these three tracks, we need some data. So again, searching the living atlas using some keywords, we can find some of this authoritative US Forest Service data. Now the fine folks over there at the Forest Service through their 
FIO program. I've spent a lot of time and effort in generating some of these authoritative carbon modeling layers that you can use not only for visualization and analysis across the contiguous United States. The one we're interested in here is this total forest carbon layer, which is actually gonna give us an estimate storage potential in tons per acre for all of these different areas across the US. And we can go ahead and add this layer to our map and we can see more or less the spatial distribution of carbon storage potential. Now I've already loaded this layer into my map so it looks a little prettier. And, and what we're looking at here is really everything in a darker green color is gonna be a higher storage potential and everything in a lighter green or whitish color is gonna be a lower storage potential. And this imagery layer is made up of a bunch of tiny little pixels that cover 30 by 30 meter cells. And each one of those pixels has a value. In this case, the estimated storage potential in tons for each of these pixels. So I can see clicking around on a lot of these different pixels, different values depending on uh, whether or not there's more, you know, uh, organic matter or less organic matter. And what I really am interested in here is the total storage potential again within these three tracks. So I want to be able to clip or extract this raster data set to my polygons that I'm looking at here in the map. And using the new ArcGIS image for ArcGIS Online tools, I now have these raster analysis capabilities, similar to what you might find using Image Server and ArcGIS Enterprise. So I can do all of this through the web interface here without any software or any backend infrastructure. So the workflow, the tool I'm interested in here is this extract raster tool. And this is gonna allow me to, again, extract this total forest carbon raster data by clipping to my timber tracks feature layer. I can go ahead and run this analysis, make sure I give it a name so it doesn't yell at me. And that one already exists. So he told you it was gonna yell at me. All right, let's try two. I can, I've done this a few times, if you can't tell. All right, so going back to our details, our layer list here, while that analysis runs, uh, just to, you know, for the sake of time, we'll look at kind of the output while that, that process churns. So really what we're interested in here, again, is the clipped raster data set for our area of interest. And this is what the output looks like. Again, we still have a pixel by pixel value that shows us the relative storage potential in each one of these pixels. But what we're really interested in, again, is the total summary of all of these pixels within each one of these three tracks. So running another analysis tool, this time under summarized data, we want to summarize all of those pixel values within each one of our tracks. So we're gonna fill out some parameters here that allow us to do that. We'll take our output of our first process, which you see just loaded in there, and then the statistic we're gonna calculate is a summary. Again, I can come in here and run this, but for the sake of time, we'll look at the output. And before we do that real quick, we can see that that first tool ran in about a minute. It outputted a hosted uh, data set, hosted imagery layer that is stored in ArcGIS Online in this case. And we can use that for visualization and further analysis if we want. So I'll go ahead and turn that one off for now. And we'll look at the result of our summarized uh, within tool to see our total storage estimate in tons, right? So if I click on each one of these three tracks, we can see an estimate in, in tons that allows us to better assess and model what the overall potential is. Now, you might say, Scott, this, this data is from 2018, it's 2021, you know, there's been a lot of change on these tracks and a lot of harvest activity that's gonna impact this estimate. So how can we account for that? Well, if we look at some of the imagery that we pulled in from the first act, looking at some of this up-to-date Sentinel imagery, we can indeed see that there's been a lot of harvest activity. And that's gonna reduce our overall carbon storage potential because, well, we don't have as many trees or as much organic matter to store that carbon. So how can we take account, uh, the account of all of this recent activity? Well, one option is we can run a change detection. And there's a lot of hosted raster function templates that Elvis was gonna talk about and other tools that you can actually use within ArcGIS Online to do this. And we'll look at the output of that here by running a change detection of you know, 2018 imagery to 2021 imagery using Sentinel-2 and multispectral data. We're looking at a change in NDVI here that's really representing a decrease in vegetation in all of these purple areas. 
So what we can do is we can extract that data either by digitizing it or running some AI ML tools to identify our harvest boundaries or our harvested areas. And what we wanna do from here is now summarize the total storage potential of all of these harvested areas. So again, running our hosted analysis tool to summarize within our, our harvest boundaries, we can generate an output that shows us the relative storage potential lost from each harvest activity. And I can click on a few of these and see what that value is. Now what we wanna do is extract or clip our original summarized data that excludes these harvested areas so that they're not included in our adjusted estimate. And looking at that here, right, we can simply turn off this layer and we can see how we've kind of erased all of those harvest boundaries. And if I turn on my up-to-date imagery, we can see these overlap pretty well with some of our recent harvest activity. Now, the last step again is to run a final summarization to generate the new adjusted estimate potential based on these exclusion, the exclusion of these harvest boundaries. So doing that, again, we can click on each one of our timber tracks and we can see this new adjusted potential. And if I compare that to our original original estimate, we can see what the departure is. So in this case, we went from 294 down to about 239. And we can see that change in all of these tracks. And, and what this is really doing is it's giving me a more accurate estimate of what that carbon storage potential is so that I can more accurately assess some of these carbon offset programs that we may be evaluating. And this may be on our own land, it may be on other land that we're looking at, depending on what our role is within this emerging carbon industry. And just a few things to highlight is, you know, this data that I'm using is completely out of the box. It's authoritative, it's coming from the US Forest Service. So you can do this for virtually any area in the lower 48. All of the analysis tools are completely hosted. I don't have any hardware or infrastructure or expertise needed to manage all of this imagery data set, uh, data sets. And then I'm doing this analysis in about five to 10 minutes. So uh, you can do this really quick. You can turn this type of workflow over quickly if you need to evaluate several different areas. So it's a really great resource and kind of a modern approach to some of these workflows that we're hearing from a lot of you guys today. So with that, I'll throw it back to Charlie and maybe see if we have Elvis back online. Actually, we do have Elvis. So we're gonna segue back to Elvis and pick up with him. Elvis, are you ready? I am, and I apologize for that, the beauty of working from home with the internet. So I'm gonna pick up where I left off, where I just shown you before and after imagery of after a storm event. And I went ahead and calculated what we call the soil adjusted vegetation index, which is a measure of vegetative health. My next step from here is actually to calculate the difference between our soil vegetation index before and after the storm. And to do so, I'm going to take advantage of these raster analysis functions or, or function templates within the ArcGIS system. And I'm going to use a compute um, a raster function here to actually compute the difference between my soil vegetation, soil adjusted vegetation index after and um, before the storm event. And we want to get the difference of the two. And running this analysis gives you an output that looks something like uh, this. So now what you can see is um, the loss of healthy vegetation in these purple tones here and some of the heaviest losses in the deep purple tones. And as I visually inspect this, you can sort of see that this storm traveled from the northwest corner all the way down to the southeast corner, corner of my area of interest. So pretty interesting path there. Now, the, the final thing we want to do is it's two part, really. First, we want to calculate some zonal statistics to extract the average loss of vegetation um, for my field boundary. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on these field boundaries and show you what that looks like. And we'll turn off our savvy. And again, to do this, we're going to use these raster analysis functions, which are quite handy for dynamically doing this type of analysis. We'll run a zonal statistics and we'll use our field boundaries and our loss of vegetation health, as well as an ID for each field. So what this gives me is a mean loss of vegetation health and it creates a table. So if I run this analysis, we get a table that shows our mean loss of vegetation health 
for each of my polygons which represent my field boundaries. And finally, what we're going to do with this table is we're going to join it back to the field boundaries, and then we're going to classify this based on that loss. And we get a result that looks something like this. So now you can see that loss of vegetation from high to low, again, just extenuating this diagonal damage here all the way across from the left um, all the way to the bottom right of my area of interest. So again, in very few minutes there, and I apologize for the loss of connectivity, you saw storm imagery before an event and after event. We calculated vegetation health from it. We extracted the average loss for each field to create basically a crop damage assessment map that you can see on my screen now. But the beauty of this, and this is what Scott showed as well, is that we did all of this in a web browser. So we just showed you the brand new SaaS offering called ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online, which will let you host your imagery, it'll let you analyze it, it'll let you streamline your, your imagery and raster collections from a secure, scalable cloud environment that integrates with the rest of your ArcGIS system. So with that, I will believe I'll turn things back over to Charlie since we got a little bit off track there. Excellent, you're right on, you're, it's right on track there, man. You're well. So th these examples that we saw from Scott and Elvis certainly fit the title beyond visualization, right? Uh, Elvis showed us two things, two very important things. One, we found out the internet's not perfect, but we recovered, right? We made it back, that's fine. Second thing he said is he conveyed some all too common facts of agriculture. Weather events can be destructive and almost always an issue can happen during your annual crop season. So we're, you know, you really should think about using the power of imagery and GIS analysis to help you calculate values like this during your uh, growing season and build to your intelligence. Um, he also showed crop damage analysis by the, the SAVI, the Soil Adjusted Vegetative Index, from it before a storm and after the storm. Thus, we saw dramatic effects in what a storm can do to a crop area. Scott showed us the forest carbon accounting example we produced estimates of carbon area by clipping data to property boundaries and found the carbon storage potential. It's a really, really big deal these days. From that, he ran a process to estimate carbon storage loss in each of the properties for the total tract area. So, and then he summarized the data with an adjusted estimate value so you have a more accurate estimate of carbon storage. That, that quite, uh, that's, that's quite the, the value proposition for doing that type of GIS analysis with imagery, for sure. And as both gentlemen conveyed in these examples, and really in this whole act right here, you could not have done this by an ArcGIS SaaS product, product as recently as a few months ago. It is so, so powerful, these new tools. That's not everything yet, though. I'm going to pass it over to Audrey now, and she'll show us even more. Audrey? Wonderful. Thanks, Charlie. Really appreciate that. And thanks, Elvis and Scott, for the fantastic demonstration. Now that we've covered how to store, manage, and share imagery across your organization, let's talk about how to take some of the data that you might be collecting on the ground and incorporate that into your analyses so that you can make these analyses site-specific, relevant, and timely. Most importantly, Elvis is gonna show you how to use Esri's out-of-the-box tools to make this workflow repeatable and straightforward. So for those of you that are working with the drones today, listen up, this act is gonna help to show you how you can take some of that drone imagery and share it uh, more broadly across your organization and share some of the analysis as well across your organization so that that can be a repeatable and straightforward workflow. And ultimately, you know, get more out of that investment in your the technology. So Elvis, I'm gonna turn things over to you. Okay, I'm keeping my fingers crossed here. Okay, thank you. And um, so drone technology is really transforming the way farm managers um, manage their crops. It's making it easier to monitor field activities and actually uh, potentially maximize your yields. In today, in less than 15 minutes, a UAV technology can survey a 160 acre field, identify variations in plant health, provide intel to farmers in near real time right giving them access to data and aerial views to make them make to help them make agronomic decisions this process 
can begin with the planning and execution of a drone flight. And within the ArcGIS system, this can be handled within SiteScan for ArcGIS, which you can see on my screen. Um, I'm in the SiteScan manager right now, which is an end-to-end cloud-based drone mapping software designed for imagery collection, processing, and analysis. Now in this manager, you can see my area of interest, and actually I've got some drone, some drone flights, um, some raw drone imagery already turned on that you can see I'm just visually analyzing this raw drone imagery right here within SiteScan. But once this imagery has been processed, actually, and we'll turn on the, the processed ortho mosaic, it, it actually starts to look really, really a lot of rich detail that I can start to see here. And again, within this, this site scan um, manager, I've got a ton of mensuration tools here on the side that'll allow, allow me to create mensurations or measurements on this imagery to start to visualize um, maybe some, some areas of concern or areas of interest. So as I turn on some of these markups that I've, um, that I've previously uh, created here, you can see I designated this area as a high disease or pest area just because we can see that some of the vines here um, have been removed for some reason. And so this might be an area of interest that we want to focus our attention on, right? So I can also turn on other mensuration areas, or I can go in here and just start to create mensurations based on my observations of this drone imagery. All this is happening just um, just here within 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 the site scan um, interface. And then I can zoom out and focus on, on other areas that I would like to um, further um, analyze. In addition to that, you can do a lot of different types of measurements. So I've gone ahead and created a few measurements here that um, really highlight some of the row spacing, especially around the area that was of concern to me where we'd pulled out some of the vines. I could go in here and measure some of that row spacing. The point here is I'm in, I'm in a web browser, I'm analyzing drone imagery that has recently been flown, but I might be interested in taking this drone imagery out of this interface, out of SiteScan, and extending the analysis into Pro. So I might want to export the, the, the byproducts, the TIFFs, right? the ortho mosaics, the contours that created the point clouds. I might want to export that and further analyze that in Pro or I might wanna take that into ArcGIS Online as well, which I'll show you here in a few minutes. So you have the ability to just bring that area and just you know name it appropriately and bring that area into, into ArcGIS Online and start to analyze that area. So let's turn things back over to ArcGIS Pro and see what that analysis looks like. So, Oh, there we go. So we've got a little, another little hiccup there. So let's go ahead and switch to ArcGIS Online and we'll get back to Pro. So in ArcGIS Online, I have the same area brought up here. I've got my scouting layer set up because I eventually want to get this into the hands of field users so that they can actually scout. But with this imagery now in ArcGIS Online, I can start to take advantage of some of the raster analysis capabilities and actually create some additional information products. So we're looking at here a three band um, image. And for this particular image, I probably wanna be able to calculate something like um, the visible atmospheric resistant index, which is very, which requires just three bands. And I can run this analysis or I can preview the analysis. It'll take just a handful of credits. But if you run the analysis, you get something that looks like this. So now I've calculated vary for this particular area of interest. It's given me a little bit more information. So those areas in green um, show, show me that we've got some vegetation occurring there. Those areas in dark red, maybe those are the areas of concern that I might want to put this imagery into the hands of field workers so that they can go out and do a dedicated scout. So I've highlighted some of those areas and now you can see these areas, right? they become a little bit more clear. So when I put this imagery into the hands of field workers, they can go out and get their work carried out in a more efficient way. The final one I want to show you is another, is another um, ortho that I've brought in here to ArcGIS Online. And I went ahead and calculated things like the red edge, and I've calculated my um, um, chlorophyll red edge as well as my red edge NDVI. And then I've designated some potential scouting areas where I can send people out 
with with a purpose now they can scout for disease they can scout for pests they can scout for weeds so switching over to my mobile device this looks something like this so i go ahead and launch my map and again you're looking at the imagery that may have started in something like sites can but i can go ahead and turn on my ortho and you can see the level of detail here i'm, I'm in field maps which is one of our mobile applications and so i can turn on those information products that i just created like my scouting areas and 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 all of the different mensurations now as someone in the field with this application in hand i know those areas that i need to focus attention on so i can quickly just 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 tap and start to scout at that particular location making sure that i've turned on my scouting layer so that as soon as i hit this now i can scout for weeds for pests and for disease so within a few minutes here barring the the internet um, issues i've been able to show you how to take things from site scan into pro where you can do some analysis and we didn't quite get to that but into arcgis online and then pushing things all the way back into our mobile device where we can send folks out into the field so that they can collect information that's relevant to their business use case so with that i will turn things back over to my colleagues Fantastic. Thank you so much, Elvis, for the excellent demo. That was great. And again, um, just really excited to see how you can take some of that imagery and get that out to people in the field more quickly. So to summarize what we saw, Elvis talked about the workflow from taking our drone imagery into SiteScan, which is an Esri product. I see some questions in the chat around that into ArcGIS Pro. Um, and then there's a lot of out-of-the-box raster functions that you can do in Pro to better understand vegetation health. He uploaded the imagery to ArcGIS Online, where he performed an analysis using ArcGIS Image. And then he took this analysis and shared it with field workers so that they could quickly use his analysis to focus their time to confirm conditions and prescriptions in key areas. So for those of you who are working with drones, this is just a great example of how you can really extend that imagery. We're happy to talk about that more with you. Um, I'm going to turn things back over to Charlie now. Thanks, Audrey. So let's talk about what we saw today. Um, there is a plethora of imagery and raster data available today for everyone using ArcGIS. We saw that with the Living Atlas for sure. Remember, when you license ArcGIS technology, you get access to all of the Living Atlas for free. So virtually all the data you saw that was being used there, I believe is free. A great, no, great percentage of that. Imagery is a key component to our ever expanding GIS use cases and analysis in agriculture and forestry. We saw examples and more importantly, workflows that demonstrated that. Image analysis tools have come a long way and there's so much, and they're so much more friendly today than they were as recently. And, and now with available with SaaS solutions, you really have a lot of different ways in which you can get access to this technology. Our example of imagery tools in new ways, that was the ArcGIS image for ArcGIS Online, showed wonderful. It was fantastic, I think. With this product, you can perform your image analysis and do your imagery management much, much easier now. The bar for entry into advanced analytics and data storage has lowered for sure. And whether you're an imagery expert or a novice, we've got tools to help your organization. So like I said before, at the very beginning, we want to help you. So how do you get started, right? There's a number of ways we can do this. Uh, after these outstanding demonstrations, we wanna help you with this. You can either contact your account manager or we can connect you with your person if you don't know who that is. With that contact, you can share your thoughts on adding imagery, functions to your workflow. Then between you all, you can review your current environment, assess what you may need, what might you might need to achieve your goals and plan your next steps of implementing a solution. We are certainly happy to help you all. Otherwise, as a licensee of Esri technology, you have a vast amount of coursework and lessons that you can educate yourself by a training on functions or techniques of our spatial tech tools. There's an unbelievable amount of education tools for you too. Additionally, you can review previous webinars and events on similar products or operations 
to help you stay on a path of success. You'll have access to this video actually at some point here too. The next option would be professional services. That's an excellent option for people that may not have time or the experience of a subject matter of our technology. Our team of product and industry specialists can help you be successfully. Humbly, I think that we have some of the smartest GIP, GIS people in the industry working for us, and I'm, I'm confident they can help you, that's for sure. And then lastly, SRE actually has a dedicated team of imagery specialists. We'll facilitate that introduction, and alongside these specialists, you can get help implement the right tools and data sets to meet your needs. Now I'm going to pass it back to Audrey again. Excellent. Um, thank you so much, Charlie. And we really wanted to get to the Q&A session. Um, unfortunately, we're pretty short on time and we want to be conscious of everybody's time here. So we will follow up with you directly after the webinar on your questions. You can also reach out to us. Here's our contact information. Please feel free to reach out to any of us if you have specific questions. And if you did ask a question in the webinar, then we will follow up with you directly after the webinar. I want to provide you with some other resources that you can take away from this presentation. Um, this is, uh, we have the imagery resources handout, we have a recap, recap handout in the GoToWebinar box. Um, again, contact us if you have any questions. And we also have a forestry group and an agriculture group on LinkedIn, which are there to support all of you, um, you know, the, the work that you're doing and have the opportunity to collaborate, ask questions with colleagues and other folks in the industry. So we'd love to hear from you in those groups and please join them if you haven't already. Um, thank you all so much for being here today. We really appreciate your time and we're looking forward to working with you more.